Welcome back, Zerkai fans, to the December 2019 1v1 tournament. I remain Dominic, your host, and we are into the second round. We're going to be watching Dice, Dice 68 versus Ultra Godzilla, which already started due to a small misunderstanding about the maps. So we're going to be on Otago, not Banana Republic, despite what the, the bottom bar says, because it was supposed to be Banana Republic, but there was some confusion. Anyway, Ultra Godzilla! Going for rovers, as I expected in the last one, because Otago was a very, very flat map. And tanks, of course, for Dice 68, because it really worked for them last time. Why not? Hey, second time's the charm. Dice is clearly finding their success with tanks. And wait, what? Yeah, see, the thing is that spectators are muted, so I have I can't talk to the players if something needs to be done. Yay. Well, I'll just stare at Ultra Godzilla's commander. Longingly. Oh, Recon Com's got a really cool design. I don't know. Just the sort of dual jetpack thing is really neat. So yeah. I don't know. Doesn't get appreciated enough. I don't think this is an arm commander. I think this is its own thing. I'm trying to remember. Alright, well. What are we waiting for? Oh, real life. Okay, yeah, real life interferes. It does that. That's a thing real life does. But it's a, it's fine. All right, so we are back. So anyway, back to the game proper. Dyth looking to be going for that same raiding strategy they went for last time. Ultra Godzilla does not have any defensive setup. They do have a couple of Scorchers, which I should point out are not especially great at regenerating. Kodachi, on the other hand, is at least... Yeah, it's able to do okay. I mean, it's getting distracted. That's the important thing. Ultra Godzilla is able to rebuild. They're not even rebuild. They don't have to rebuild. They're able to just protect everything. They're able to just chase away the Kodachi, at least to some extent. Unfortunately, it's not a great enough extent. Scorch coming back in here. The Kodachi is trying its best to get in here, and it looks like it will indeed be able to do so. Dealing a little bit of damage to the Mason. But the main thing is it is slowing down the metal extractors. Scorches are coming in. They're trying their best, but the Kodachi is just too fast and able to get away. Dart is trying to come in and slow it down, but unfortunately it's going to be burned to death, along with one of the Scorchers. So that Kodachi has managed to get quite a bit of value on just running around and providing a bit of a distraction. Really, Ultra Godzilla, if they can hit it with a slow beam, they're probably going to be fine. They have enough Scorchers to deal with it. And that's going to come down to this Dart, and the Dart does manage to hit it. It goes down in the process, but that's fine. The Kodachi is going to be killed off as a result. That dart sacrifice was very much worth it. Ultra Godzilla should be able to completely build up over on this eastern side of the map with no problems anymore. Another Kodachi is coming up from Dice 68, but Ultra Godzilla is much better prepared now. That first Kodachi was really the only chance Dice 68 had to crack open Ultra Godzilla's base in the early game. Now, granted, there is still a bit of a path over here. So the Kodachi goes down and up. They have a bit of a chance to get in, but they are not doing so. They are, in fact, going right after the commander. There's another Dark coming in, slowing it down again, and Kodachi, thanks to the recon jump, again goes down. That's two Kodachis for the price of two darts. Absolutely worth that trade. Now, at the same time, Ultra Godzilla decides, hey, you know what? You've been going for a lot of raiding, Dyth. Maybe I should try raiding you, see what happens. And it turns out Dyth does not have a huge amount of economy or a huge amount of defenses either. So Ultra Godzilla, provided they don't get too caught up with this ogre, they should be fine. Now, of course, the ogre here, that could still be a problem. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, FFC, is the stream not working for you? Because if the stream isn't working, restart. It, It is working for me. Like, I'm seeing it come out. So I think it's your end. I'll check after the game. Anyway, there's the rating coming in here. Scorcher is managing to deal a lot of damage. I went to that intermission at the wrong... Or the hill aside at the wrong time. Because the Scorchers are doing lots of damage, getting rid of, well, damaging some of the welders, getting rid of two, one of the welders, nicely done, getting rid of two metal extractors and a welder, alongside another welder being damaged but not killed. This this welder's fine. But the remaining Scorchers should be able to take out everything. I like this, just double checking to make sure there is nothing being sent out. Just being sneaky while sending that one scouting Scorcher in. I kind of wish it wasn't the weakest Scorcher, or the frailest Scorcher in that mix. Just because, you know, all the Scorchers coming in normally would have been fine. However, that one Scorcher still managed to get the information needed. Now the Scorchers know, hey, don't go through this area too heavily. There is a Lotus. There are two Lotuses. The Lotuses are going to be able to take care of two of the Scorchers. Now, that might not be a problem ultimately. It looks like the Scorchers are going to be able to take out at least a Metal Extractor or two. 
Dice Commander coming around to try to help deal with it. But it's not going to matter. Though Scorch is able to take out the Lotuses. Able to get on Melee Strategy. This factory is heavily threatened. There is still a Welder there, and both the Scorchers are just about dead. But they have managed to get rid of pretty much what they needed to get rid of. Got rid of the Lotus. Got rid of Melee Strategy. The Welder is dealing some damage. There's the Ogre to finish it off. And at the same time, we have over to the north an Ogre threatening Ultra Godzilla's commander, but to no avail. Ultra Godzilla with that machine gun. And the Nano Lathe just to be on the safe side. And not to mention, with a massive economy, Dying 68 has been focusing so heavily on defense, they haven't had a chance to expand. Ultra Godzilla has been spending this entire time building up metal extractors across the map. They are doing very well. Okay, good to know. The restart apparently fixed the stream. Nothing is wrong. So, Dyth, unfortunately, is just not managing to keep up in this game. Like, their early gameplay was was great. Their Kodachi play was great. Their Ogre usage has been fairly strong. But they just didn't have the resources to work with. And especially with Ultra Godzilla having the Nanolays, they're, they can just reclaim like mad. Like, that commander can just go nuts. Same time, Ogre coming in here, but there's already the Ravagers to help deal with it. Like, Ravager Fencer is basically how you deal with Ogres. And that's exactly what's been set up. That Ogre is simply not going to have a chance. It's certainly trying, but... Yeah, the two Ravagers coming in here. One of them goes down, the other one able to finish things off. The last Ogre will win the fight, but that was a huge cost. And more Scorches coming in, more... Support forces from Dyth. I mean, the main thing for Dyth is can they maintain this northwest side? The support force is going to help. I mean, the Kodachis are definitely going to provide a little bit of cover for the Ogre against the Scorchers, or more so from the Emissary. Unfortunately, they are getting a little out of position because they have to. I mean, the Scorchers going over to the northwest side. Like I said, this is what Dyth needs to hold on to, and it does not look promising. The Kodachis trying to get in where they need to in the smart ways, but that welder is basically screwed. I mean, the Scorchers coming in here will be able to tear it apart no problem. And once that's done, this northwest side is... it's over. Like, Dyth has nothing from that point. And there goes the Welder. From there, there's no way to hold on to that northwest side of the map. Ultra Godzilla looks like they're... I mean, they got their commander right there. They're probably going to go take it themselves. And at the same time, they decided, hey, you know what? Let's get an airplane factory. No units being built yet. Probably Thunderbird, because... I mean, that's what else are you going to build in an air factory? Although, actually, against tanks, I don't necessarily see Thunderbird. In fact, against tanks, I would see Ravens. It'd be much more likely to me. Speaking of tank factory, though, the Emissary is managing to provide a little bit of resistance. Ultra Godzilla unable to hold on to this front line as easily as they were able to before. I mean, it's still there. It's still theirs for the time being. But, you know, get rid of that radar. Open things up a little bit. I mean, right now, Ultra Godzilla, they did rebuild that radar. They did manage to regain vision of what's going on over around the valley between them and Dyth. But Dyth could be expanding over to the south. I mean, okay, there's one fencer. But if that fencer goes down, then, well, this entire area can be expanded to without anyone really knowing. I think Ultra Godzilla has no radar coverage of this southern side, so it it's free. Dyth could easily take it and get that little bit of extra metal of, you know, four or five metal per second would be a huge difference maker. I mean, that being said, Dyth is behind, but if you look at the attrition stats, they're not that far behind. I mean, they're behind in terms of how much they're constructing, and army value, I believe, is quite the disparity... Yeah, there is... Wait, what? Dyth has higher arm... Okay, to be fair, tanks are more expensive than light vehicles, but Dyth has higher army value. I mean, Ultra Godzilla has more economy and more defense, but Dyth has got a strong, got a larger army. Ultra Godzilla running with their commander might be a little bit too hasty right now. And we are running Ravens. That is exactly what's being done. Which, again, makes sense against the heavier heavy tanks, the fact that they can't really move around. But it's just, yeah, I don't know. Like, it, it looks like Dyth is actually doing okay. And Ultra Godzilla losing their commander to the fire. Dyth, I, I mean, it's going to be a hard-fought fight, but this front line no longer has a builder to help support it, so it could go down to attrition. Unfortunately, Dyth has not decided to expand over to the south side of the map, so Ultra Godzilla maintaining a very strong metal advantage. Not to mention, oh, there they are. There's the Ravens trying to get rid of Dyth's commander, and Dyth, they are selecting the commander. They are ready. They're on the jump, but that's not even the question. 
That doesn't even matter. The Raven's coming in to kill the factory. Dice sees the writing on the wall and gives the game to Ultra Godzilla, which puts Dice in the lower bracket. It's nicely done. Ultra Godzilla, just a very strong economic play. I mean, they kept themselves alive from the early harassment. Like that, that early Kodachi harassment could have been deadly, but Ultra Godzilla held on just fine, didn't lose much. After that point, Dice didn't seem to know what they do. If they had expanded alongside that harassment, they probably would have been able to maintain the economy. If they had like gone the south side of the map, taken maybe this metal extractor, like just taken this entire section of the map here. If that had been grabbed during the harassment attempts, I think Dyth would have had a chance to get into the mid game. But as it was, Dyth was fighting uphill. They had a strong army for most of the game, or at least a valuable army. But again, tanks are more expensive, so it's a bit hard to use that when you consider value killed is a bit more even. Yeah, and attrition was definitely in Dyth's favor at first. But it's about positioning, it's about economy, it's about what you can build up to make up for losses. And Dyke simply couldn't keep up. So, now that that's done, let's go back to the bracket and see what's going on here, which I think it's being a little bit screwy. I'm not sure if it's updating live. Eh, yeah, it is. Okay. Well, Ultra Godzilla moves on to the upper bracket finals. Dyke drops down to loser of seven, so that's... Lower semis two. Orange Sky versus Hawk is deciding that, and it looks like check what's being played right now. Let us check the battle list. So that Hulk Godzilla is done. Matthew Whitman Steel Blue is also done. Steel Blue won, so Steel Blue and Ultra Godzilla. That will be the upper bracket finals. And lower bracket finals is. Still running, but I think we're going to be doing the upper bracket. Let's double check. If we do the upper bracket now, I'm just going to keep going. If we're doing the upper bracket finals now, then we'll just roll on into the next round. No break. Otherwise, I will put a... I mean, sorry, there will be a bit of a break. Otherwise, I'll just go over and check the lower bracket matches. I don't want to be caught up in the lower bracket matches. Okay, we're waiting for the lower bracket matches. I'll actually be able to see the map Banana Republic. This is a new map that was designed very recently based on a forum thread that was kind of... An interesting thread about, hey, what can we do for a cool map? And then it ended up coming out with this, which was an interesting design. I haven't really seen it in practice, though. And arguably, I'm still not going to because this is going to be a very rapid changeover since, you know, it's coming in off the rejoin load. That always takes a little while. All right. So, what do we have here? Orange Sky going for Shield Bots. Well, on the other hand, Cloak Bots coming from Hawk. Classic matchup. Can I please have audio? There we go. It is the classic matchup, and Hawk. Actually, Hawk is managing quite a lot of damage here. But Orange Sky winning the macro game outright, having really no problems with air. I mean, Hawk should manage to get him, but the thing is, they did kind of start quite defensively. And they simply do not have the way I was holding on to any of this stuff. The shield ball running around the map. Orange Sky has having no issues. Actually, two shield balls running around the map. One over the south. Thugs, rogues, outlaws. The other one over the north. The felons on top of that. And that is just not working out well for Hawk. And Hawk throws in the towel as a result. I do kind of want to talk about this map because I didn't get a chance to go over it before. So yeah, this map... this the. I mean, the whole point of this map is trying to find a way of making different factors work well. So the thing with this map, it's kind of flat. You do have the hills to make bots work fairly well. Along with a lot of choke points to allow for expansion. So you start out over in this area here. Over, like, kind of the northwest, or south, southwest, northeast. With out 20 metal guaranteed between these expansions. And then it's just a matter of jumping to further expansions and... All, the whole thing was designed around trying to make sure that there was no easy way of 
just holding onto a massive amount of the map. So everything is kind of open and everything is a little bit vulnerable, but everything still has a defensible side. Like there's always this mountain that's just holding onto something, which is neat. Now the lava, I'm not so sure about it. It's kind of this Indiana Jones vibe in a way, but I, I mean, I think it's cool. A lot of people were against it, but it's like, if anyone, if anyone has been around since I was doing Acron stuff knows that I made a lava tile set for that game that involved using grass. Because the idea being that volcanic soil is very fertile. So just thought, hey, anything that's not currently being scorched by the lava is gonna have green on it. And it's, know, it's a cool little contrast. Anyhow, that was that rather cursory examination of this map. So I'm moving on from here to oops, to the next game, which or next round. And it'll be a short break until then, so we'll be back with round three. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.